Is your deck causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation and it's special. Razabani for IFL TV in association with MTK Global with me on Zoom all the way from Dubai, my man, Mr. Ben Davis. Ben, you're looking quite happy today. Are you okay? I'm all good. I'm all good, Joe. I'm very well, very well. Uh, firstly, I want to say many congratulations. I saw your Instagram post yesterday proposing to your partner. Um, you didn't come up with that plan, did you? Listen, uh, there's another side to me that, you know, I've got a bit of game. Let's leave it like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how's Dubai treating you? Just a bit of warm weather training out there? Yeah, a bit of warm weather training. Um, nice for a change of scenery before I uh, hopefully fingers crossed a busy 2021. No, absolutely. Uh, ben, let's get straight into it. Uh, Friday night, Billy Joe Saunders was back in action. Uh, his first fight since he kind of left you with Mark Tibbs. Uh, Billy was quite critical of his performance where he thought he didn't do enough, he didn't impress, he didn't make a statement. Uh, people forget Martin Murray is, a, is kind of a top-level fighter. I know he's 38 towards the back end of his career now, but he's been in there with some great, great fighters and, and he knows how to take your game away from you to make it a bit of a dirty game. But it was, what did you, how did you assess Billy's performance? Yeah, I mean, look, that's a, that's, a, that's a positive thing that Billy Joe is looking at it like that because it shows where he sets his standards. And that's why he's as good as he is, because he sets his standards high for himself. That's a great asset for any fighter to have if he come out there and had a load of smoke blown up his ass. That, you know, I wouldn't say it was a, it was a performance that, that shook up the world, but it, and, and, you know, I it's not 100% Billy Joe, obviously. But, you know, he had an on-off, year, you know, supposed to have a big fight, he made no bones about it, put some weight on, had to get that weight off, um, and got out at least once in, in 2020, so he's blowing some cobwebs off, got the 12 rounds in, like you say, Martin Murray's a, uh, you know, he's, he's a savvy old veteran, and, um, you know, it's nice for Billy Joe to blow the cobwebs off, but oh, oh, it's always important for, as a coach, to be honest, as well, and it wasn't a blow your way type performance but it was shaking some ring rust off there were some moments there where you could see he started getting into his groove um, so that was a positive but yeah what it was it, it was what it was where it was a case of Billy Joe blowing some ring rust off so you know he's got that done hopefully sets him up to, to keep that momentum going now so um, it's a step in the right track and it's exactly what he needed I read somewhere where Billy Joe turned professional around the same time as James DeGale and Frankie Gavin, who are both retired uh, a couple of years ago. Billy's definitely in his peak now. So is it absolutely essential that he has those top-level fights, Triple G, Canelo's, Andrade, Caleb Smith? It has to be one of them next. Or he, he, must, he probably hasn't shown all his skills yet, you know, if, if he doesn't fight any of those big names. Yeah, he did turn pro along the same time as them. Obviously, he was on the Beijing squad that with those guys that you name, but you got to remember he went to those Olympics at 18 years old. That's how good he was and is. So, um, you know, he, he's younger than them guys. He's 31. He's 31. There's no age, you know. He's an athlete. He's trained all his life. Um, of course, you know, it's at the point now, not even where he needs to look after himself for the sake of longevity. It's not even that. It's a case of at that top level, you have to just, you have to keep on it all the time. You can't be focusing on, you know, like I said, he made no bones about it. So, so that's why I'm saying it, that he had a lot of weight to lose going into that fight. Um, but you don't want that to be a challenge and something that's on your mind each time you have to get ready. You want to be able to focus on performance, focus on tech, be able to relax and have just a technical session here and there, a tactical session and, not just every day having to work, 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 and um, you know revolve your, your your training camp just around having to blow a load of weight off. So 
like I say, it's good that he's, that that fight done what it was supposed to do for him, and sets him up to to keep that momentum going now. And um, you know, there's obviously the talk to the big fights coming up around the corner. I know that at the minute there's a big fight between Callum Smith and, and Canelo coming up, um, and hopefully Billy Joe can get the winner of that. But as you said, there's other opportunities there as well. I know that he can go back down in weight. He could. Uh, I believe he blows all the middleweights away, looks a million dollars against all of them, um, and could become a, a three-time world champion. But there's options there for him. Obviously, he wants to stick around the super middleweight division because you know he fancies himself against the the uh, in the Canelo fight, and that's the fight that he wants. And and um, you know I understand that, so that makes sense. Did you watch the Anthony Yard fight uh, on the weekend, Ben? I did. Now, I didn't watch every minute of every round because I was over here and, you know, time differences, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, I watched the majority of it, yeah. So I couldn't score it, but I could, you know, I know what happened. So how did you kind of assess his performance? We know we live in this crazy social media world where we saw last week people criticising Daniel Dubois for taking a knee. Uh, there's a lot of criticism towards Anthony Yard about, you know, his corner work. Uh, they they realised too late that Arthur wasn't throwing his right hand and he should change. He doesn't spar. Uh, what kind of what, what have you kind of made of all of that? Um, I would say the it's hard for me to comment on on his team because how would I know? How does anybody know? You know what what they know and what they don't know, what they do do and what they don't do because I've not been in the gym with him. I've not watched him train. I can't comment on that. And I'm sure 90% of the people that are having these things to say don't know. Um, I think that for someone to say that had 12 amateur fights um, and gone into a professional career, it looks to me like he's made some fantastic progression. So clearly, it's not everything they're doing is wrong. They must be doing something right. Um, but of course, you know, I actually done the, the punditry work for the weigh-in for BT Sport. And I actually said that in... Uh, yards previous fight he was pressing very hard from the left which I understand he's I understand there's reasons why he would be doing that but he's allowing his opponent to forever walk back to the centre um, whereas a big physical presence and someone that is usually quite busy with his non-punching activity and is, is strong and can punch to keep someone under that mental pressure with their back one step or if not against the ropes it's very draining for a fighter um, with nowhere to go. But when you keep allowing him to go back to the centre, then you're forever having to start again to walk him back into that position. Um, and of course, you know, anybody that's, that's boxed will know that an orthodox fighter is a lot more comfortable jabbing on the move, moving to their left. And when you're pressing hard from the left, you're allowing Lynn Martha to do that. Now, I don't want to sound like... I don't want to sound like... I'm not saying that Arthur did things well um, because he did, but there was elements that Yard allowed him to do. Um, something that, that Lyndon and Arthur did very well that that um, Yard really struggled with was, and again, I spoke about this in the punditry, uh, in the BT Sport thing, before the... Uh, before the... Uh, on the way in that if you're throwing a predictable jab at Anthony Yard, he's probably going to counter you. Uh, but Lyndon Arthur done a very good job of mixing up the rhythm and the timing and the distance and the variety of his lead handwork, which really threw Anthony Yard off. Um, and to combat that, Yard needed to pick up, either pick up the pace and intensity of his work. Um, but, you know, I don't think he, he, he did enough of that. Um, but it was a good fight and I think that a rematch is, is something that we'd all want to see unless of course there's an opportunity for one of them to go and fight for a world title right away which then would make sense to say okay let's agree something now that you know the fight takes place um, after giving someone the opportunity to go and do that um, then the fight becomes a bigger fight but uh, yeah you know it was, it, was a, it was a good fight I think I felt going into the fight, it was probably a fight to 
a fight that Anthony Yard should have had, maybe a couple of fights earlier, but it was the right fight at the right time for Lyndon Arthur because it's important for these, I'm not going to call them prospects because he's a champion, but for these guys that are uh, progressing in their career and at that period of their career to have those fights where questions are asked of them, where people say, hmm, is he all that? Because there's been something that's been exploited. Well, guess what? Things have to be exploited for you to then know this is what I need to work on. This is where development needs to be focused on. If you're never getting asked those questions, you're never going to know where 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 the problems lie. So, I felt like you know that was a that was a positive that Lyndon Arthur had going into the fight. Although Arthur had probably the bigger amateur pedigree, Yard had been in with the, at the better level with 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 the Kovalev fight. Um, but I think that what stood Arthur in um, in a favour here was the fact that he's had those fights where questions have been asked and weaknesses have been exposed for him to be able to go back to the drawing board with his coach and work on things. And um, Listen, I know Anthony Yard. I like Anthony Yard and I'm a fan of Anthony Yard. And I know the type of character he is. And although he's upset about the fight, I know that he'll be going back to the drawing board and working on things. So there's always a positive to take out of a negative. Ben, do you feel like the culture in boxing needs to change? We saw last week when Daniel Dubois lost, he got so much criticism, not just from the public, but ex-fighters, current fighters, promoters and managers about taking that knee. We saw Anthony Yard take criticism this weekend. Andy Lee spoke about it and he said, We're, fighters are already sacrificing by getting themselves into a ring. They're not going to kill themselves. They're not going to end their career in the ring as well just to please the fans and entertainment. In UFC fighters tap out every week and they come back. Does the culture in boxing need to change? Um, it's a difficult one to answer. What I will say is this. What I will say is this. Each situation is different. I've got a feeling, now I don't know this is a fact, but I've got a feeling that the very, very first jab was a jab that done some damage to Daniel Dubois. Um, I know it's right away. The first jab was a significant jab that put Daniel back on his heels. And I thought, oh, he's felt that. The eyes started swelling almost right away, obviously by the 10th round. Now, if Daniel Dubois has gone 10 rounds with a broken orbital bone against someone that's known to be a ferocious, intense, huge heavyweight with a high punch output and can punch, and was on song that night, then it massively changes people's perspective, does it not? Um, Look, I think that fighters have to have that element of... Each time you step in the ring, you know that you are already taking that risk. Um... I think for people calling a fighter a quitter this, that, and the other. Put it this way. There's too many tough guys on Twitter. Too many tough guys that can talk it. Now, if you've walked it and you've done the 12 rounds championship level yourself and you've done that, then you've got a right to say what you want to say, in my opinion. But for all the tough guys, and these are, this is coaches included, in my opinion, you don't have the right to call someone a quitter. You don't. Um, So, that's my opinion. I think that, look, there's fighters out there that it's such a fine line. It's such a fine line. Um, and, 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 you know, if you go to if you go to the Tyson Fury fight, the first Wilder fight, when he got knocked down the 12th round, now if I hadn't put, the, if I had thrown the towel in, what happened after would not have happened. But people wouldn't have, wouldn't have, people was like, you know, what a great decision that was made there. But that very easily could have gone the other way as well. It's a split second judgment that you have to go off at instinct. Um, and I'm fully aware that me, and others included, are not going to get it right every single time. You can't get it right every single time. But 
like I say, people would have said, fair enough there if the towel had gone in. Or if Tyson had stayed down. They would have said, okay. But he got back up. And because he got back up, there's a, you know, it had that special feeling to it, a special moment, a historic moment. But then you also have to go to Wilder in the, in the, in the Fury second fight. He had that mentality of people always say that, fighters always say that, I'd rather go out on my shield. Well, what you've got to take your hat off to is he showed that. He genuinely wanted to go out on his shield. If he was getting splattered and spread all up the floor, he would rather go out like that than the tail come in. I think that you can only take your hat off to that. But of course, and I do agree with the corner throwing the towel in in that moment and in that, that fight. I think that that's what it comes down to. I think that, like I say, a fighter's got to have that mentality of, I'm going to keep going. Now, if Dubois went 10 rounds, which I think he may have done, with a broken orbital bone, that changes people's perspective massively. I think that in a situation like that, the corner, the ref, the doctor, they've sort of, it's their sort of turn to step in. But Daniel didn't seem vocal in the corner. It didn't seem like he was saying, I think I broke my, my eye, this, you know. He wasn't complaining. He was getting on with it. Maybe that's something he can take from that. Maybe that's something that Martin and Daniel's relationship can grow from from that, to have a little bit more conversation there, a little bit more express yourself a little bit more in the relationship. Perhaps, I don't know, you know, I'm just talking if, buts and maybes. Um, but, like I said, you're not going to get as a coach or a ref or a doctor ringside, you're not going to get it right every time. Um, I just think every situation is individual. And like I say, I think in terms of calling someone a quitter, if you've done the championship rounds um, and done those and been there and done that, then you've got a right to say it. But there's too many people that, that, that talk tough. And it's a comment on, on Joe's performance as well. I know everybody's talking about Dua, but Joe put in a great performance to eliminate Daniel initially, right? He did, yeah. And Daniel had some fantastic moments as well. It was a really good fight. There was moments where I thought, oh, Daniel might do something here. You know, any moment. Joe got through it. Joe come back, got back to his game plan. Joe showed his grit, showed his determination, showed his physical conditioning, um, showed his boxing skills. And there was moments where Daniel done the same. Showed his skills, showed his grit, showed his determination, showed his power, showed his tenacity. And it made for a great fight. It's just unfortunate that, you know, the way it ended. But like I say, I think that it's proved to be a sensible decision. I don't think it, it means that, you know, Daniel's not got that grit and determination. Because like I say, I've got a feeling that he went 10 rounds with a broken, a broken face. So I don't know many people that have done that. No, absolutely. We wish Daniel all the best with his recovery and hopefully seeing him back in the ring soon. Uh, ben, we're fight week this week. Anthony Joshua makes his return uh, against Kubrat Pulev. Um, Anthony's been out in the ring, I think, close to now exactly a year. Uh, last time he was out was obviously the Ruiz rematch in Saudi Arabia. Um, has Pulev sort of got it in him at 30, 37, 38 years of age? No. <laughs> that was quite Just a quick two too bit too big of a jump in level. He's not been hugely inactive, but he's been inactive at that level. You know, I mean, he may ask a couple of questions early. I'd be a bit surprised if he did. Um, I just think it's a case of how does Joshua go about the job that's more intriguing. So seeing him show some versatility, you know, and and that was one of the reasons why I always sort of had question marks over him because it was sort of at top top level you can't be one dimensional and he was a bit one dimensional although he was very very good he was just a, a little bit one dimensional now he's shown a bit of versatility showed some agility the ability to move punch and move um, punch on the move um, and we also know he's got the ability to plant his feet let some big shots go and exchange uh, shots and and um, fantastic uh, combination puncher. So the fact that he's shown some versatility, it really, you know, it's interesting. So I, I am interested to see, you know, how he goes about the fight. Do you think he could be, we saw in the first Ruiz fight, 
Ruiz came in last minute, but the whole talk at the time was Wilder, Wilder, Wilder. And Joshua admits now that Wilder did get into his mind in, in that particular fight. Now we're talking about Fury, Fury, Fury. Eddie Hearn's like, we're inviting Tyson Fury to turn up to this fight, to, to look at this fight, to be in the audience, to be ringside. You know, the, the split has been agreed, two-fight deal. I know there's other things that still need to be sorted out, but could that play in the back of his mind again, or do you think he's learned from it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think he's an intelligent guy. I think for the for him to have made the progress that he's made in boxing for how long he's been in it, says that. Um, and I think that, you know, that, that's the whole point of it, that you make these mistakes and he, he may have made that type of mistake and he's learned from it. Um, so I don't see that happening again. I mean, obviously, heavyweight boxing is never a foregone conclusion. Um, anything in boxing is never a foregone conclusion, but especially the heavyweight division. But I just think the momentum's with him. I think that he's in a good, he seems to be in a good frame of mind, like I say, um, showing some versatility, willing to learn still. Um, and I think that, that defeat done him, done him the world of good, to be honest. And uh, I think he's, he's, he will come back um, looking better than before. And that's why I'm interested to see how he goes about the job um, this weekend. Okay, Ben, just finally, uh, the first fight for 2021 has been announced yesterday. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm sure you're super excited. Floyd Mayweather and Logan Paul. Uh, you're flying out uh, in February? Don't even ask me. Don't even ask me. I hope to God that doesn't happen. I really do. I'm a, I'm a massive Floyd Mayweather fan, but I hope to God that doesn't happen. Ben, but could you understand it that Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, we saw Mike Tyson, Roy, Roy Jones the other week did over a million buys. Floyd's, Floyd's been there and done it. He almost has the right to go and do these exhibitions and earn multi-millions of pounds. Yeah, to a certain degree, but how long is he going to keep doing it for? Until the paycheck stop coming in, I guess. But they're never going to stop coming in, probably. Because he's a master at it, isn't he? He knows how to get people talking about it. So, um, you know, if, I don't know. I don't know, but... Try to tactically break just, it down in your head. I just think, obviously, listen, there's a big size difference there. And if you get... When, you, when you're someone who boxes at that level and you're in against someone at, of that level, it, it can make you look bad. And imagine he starts to make Mayweather look bad, not in terms of him doing anything, but just how messy and it's just not a good look for the sport. Is it almost like Roy, Sam, Jones, Roy Jones when he was past his best? And then he, he started going to MMA and, and being... Yeah, cool. but everyone, everyone, everyone knew what that was. And it was against other boxers. It wasn't, do you know what I mean? Against the, the YouTubers and that sort of thing. And I'm not against the YouTubers, but I think the YouTubers should fight the YouTubers um, or the other sports stars. It's great that, you know, it's bringing attraction to boxing and it's doing so good for boxing. But for a legend like Mayweather to be doing it with a YouTube star, I'm not too, too much of a fan on that, if I'm being honest. Um, have you seen the right now, I've got, I, I, Yeah, I mean, I look, the Mike Tyson, Roy Jones thing, I haven't got a problem with that. I hope they got out of it, whatever it was that they wanted to get out of it. Um, both seemed like they was happy with it and enjoyed it and got themselves in shape. So, what? and, you know, they didn't go mad with each other. So, it probably done, done them the world of good physically, mentally, emotionally and financially. So, I'm fine with that. But, if they was to go and box a YouTube, I'll, I'll probably, you know, they could go and do that, but they don't. They're, they're keeping it within the the boxing element. Like I say, the YouTubers against the other sports stars or whatever, I'm fine with that, but not a legend. Probably the greatest of all time doing it with a YouTube star. I'm not a fan of that. Would you pay for Holyfield Tyson 3 trilogy? Uh, yeah, they've earned it, didn't they? They've earned it. Like I say, as long as they're getting out of it what it is they want to get out of it, then no problem. No, absolutely. Two okay. legends of the sport. 
without doubt, without doubt. Ben, just make sure you save uh, five seats for the IFL crew on the on the table for the wedding. Make sure we're there. Uh, let us know what you want. No, no. Uh, what do you want? Do you want boxes? Do you want gifts? Do you want cash? Just let us know what you want, and we'll we'll sort it out with MTK as well. Bring me cash. <laughs> <laughs> ben Davison, IFL TV. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. This is something that comes along every now and then in generation, and it's special. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt.